This is Taspoon, the series where I aim to complete the collection log one random task at a time. After nearly two years and over 4,000 hours of gameplay, I'm finally ready to take on RuneScape's endgame as I venture into the Elite tier. Welcome to Season 4 of Taspoon. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 136 of the Taspoon series. In the last video, I did a bunch of clues, I did some Hydra for some Hydra heads, I did some Bandos where we finally got the Bandos Tacits, a massive upgrade for the account, and I ended by doing 22 hours of Hallowed Sepulchre to buy the pet recolor that I can't use because I don't have the pet. Uh, but we ended by rolling a task to get a new unique from Elite Clues. I opened all my caskets without getting one, so we are off to the next Mass World to try and get some. Uh, hopefully we might get spooned a cool item, but at the very least we should be able to get some fast Elite Clues. So yeah, I'm just going to head over there and get started. Now, I mentioned this in the last episode, but I do have a few cool upgrades since the last time I've been to Nex. Uh, most notably, now I have a Dragon Crossbow over a Rune Crossbow. Still not as good as the Arma or obviously Zerat Crossbow, but uh, an upgrade's an upgrade. I have some Ancient Dehyde, so I don't need to use the Blessing anymore. I have the Elite Combat Diaries done, which means I should have an increased chance at getting an Elite Clue, as well as I don't need as much KC, although KC isn't too bad here. And yeah, I'm just excited. I like these Elite Clue tasks now that I'm doing them at Nex. The chance at getting a cool item just makes them so much more fun to do. If I get spooned a Torva piece or Zerite Van Braces or the Nile Horn, like there's just so many cool things that could happen. I'm just really hoping I don't get an Ancient Hilt. That would be very sad. But yeah, just gonna get KC and go get started. Although I will say the Ancient Chaps really don't match the flow of my outfit as well, but you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Alright, well, I did almost 100 kills at next with no elite clue, and then, uh, well, I, as you saw there, I, I, I died. And uh, I don't really feel like going getting KC right now, so I'm going to go and do something else. I'm kind of in between doing some more Muspa, maybe get a Vendor Shard, or perhaps just go to Barrows with all those strange lockpicks I got in the last video. Uh, so I'm going to make a decision and go and do something else. And next is fun, don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying it. But sometimes I actually want to, like, play the game, and next is pretty AFK, at least in the Mass Worlds. I kind of want to, like, go and do something, so I'm going to figure something out. So I still had a few KC left on the Hydra's task that I got for the Mount Karumini task I did a while ago, and I decided to come over here and try and see if I can get an Elite Clue from Hydra. Now, Hydra's not great for Elite Clues, but I don't know, I just kind of was in the mood to do it, and unfortunately, no Elite Clue and no cool uniques, so uh, yeah, now on to a new plan, I guess. Oh, I wasn't recording, but I got a leak clue. Let's go. I decided that I was just going to do like an hour or two of Barrows before I went to bed to see if I could get lucky, and I did. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and the strange lockpicks make things so easy, especially with like all this insane gear that I'm using. Way over geared for Barrows makes it very quick. So uh, yeah, let's go do the clue. Well, that was a quick and easy elite clue. It took me like five minutes and uh, let's just open it. Hope for the best. Sad. That's okay. I was actually kind of having fun at Barrows, so I think I'm going to go back there. Why, hello and good morning to the gamers. Uh, no luck last night on any items or elite clues. And then I went to bed this morning. There is a new update. Uh, this added a bunch of stuff in the wilderness or changed a bunch of stuff with the chaos druids and some pirates and I don't know, a bunch of stuff there. Uh, the one thing that it did do is it added the ability to get the teleport anchoring scroll, which I believe are from the pirates in the wilderness, the new pirates, uh, which prevent you from being teleported by abyssal demons or chaos druids or actually I think that might be the only two examples. Maybe they'll add more in the future. 
Uh, but either way, I will have to go and get that eventually. Maybe after this task. I don't think it'll take too long. Uh, so maybe we'll do that later. Uh, for now, I think we're just going to go back to it. Uh, although I do want to talk about the Coliseum for a sec. One of the biggest complaints with the way the Coliseum was implemented was the way you got the uniques. Uh, especially the Sunfire Fanatic armor. The Sunfire armor was pulled as a relatively easy to get armor set from the Coliseum. Especially because it's not that good. It's just prayer armor more or less. And the fact that you needed to get to at least wave six before even having a chance to see a unique. And then even then the uniques were pretty rare. People are pretty disappointed. So they have since changed that. Now the uniques are more common, especially the Sunfire armor uniques, as well as you only need to make it to wave three in the Coliseum for a chance to see them. So before I didn't actually put any of the Fortis Coliseum uniques on the spreadsheet because they were deemed, you know, too hard, too uncommon. But now I might actually have to go back to the Coliseum and do as far clears as I can at a chance to see the uniques, uh, which is, I guess, fine. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really know what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, that's to be determined, but I did just want to mention it. They have since changed the Sunfire armor to be more possible to get. And the best part about it is they also changed the clue step. Now you only need one piece of the Sunfire armor set uh, in order to do the clue. And I would very much like to have that because having to drop that clue every time kind of sucks. So yeah, uh, I think if I do get that clue step, I might actually just go and do Coliseum until I get a piece uh, because I think that would be kind of fun. But anyway, I'm rambling, let's just continue. Hey, let's go, what the heck? My Barrow's luck has been so good since coming back here. I've done 13 chests. I've got two items and two elite clues, let's go. Another extremely quick elite casket acquired or hoping for a unique here. Uh, but if not, apparently my luck is really good at Barrows, so we can go back there. And I did uh, have a side goal. I want to get to a thousand Barrows chests just because I think it looks cleaner on the high scores when you look my name up, uh, which is one of the reasons that I've actually been going back to Barrows for these. But uh, yeah, I would rather get the unique here. So let's just do it. Okay, well, we're going back to Barrows. What is my luck right now? Thank you, game. That was on chest number 18. I've got three elite clues and two items in 18 chests. This is insane. That has got to be one of the coolest teleport animations of the game. I wish they used it for more things. I noticed it last time I used an orb to get here. I don't know when I made all those, but I actually remembered that I had them and I've started using them. They're one very useful, but man, they have such a sick animation. How about an elite clue unique item, please, game? No. And this is going to be chest number 1000 looking beautiful in the log. And uh, I think I am going to move on to something else just because I, you know, I don't really need any items here. Even though my luck has been pretty good, uh, I'm realizing it's just sort of wasting Zalra scales using my trident here. So uh, I'm going to go move on to somewhere where I can at least get something useful. Don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful for the three elite clues in 45 chests. That is well above the expected rate, so happy with that. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to go and do some Phantom Muspa. I still need three more Venator Shards before I can make the bow, which even though the bow isn't super useful, it is just sort of something I want to get. Uh, as well as Phantom Muspa is just a good way to get Elite Clues. It has other good drops. It has a pet that I can get. There's a bunch of reasons that I'm going back there. Uh, not to mention, I just sort of enjoy killing the boss. So yeah, let's just go do it. The plan is pretty much the same as last time I did Muspa, with the exception of this time I have a Dragon Crossbow instead of a Rune one, uh, and then I also have the Sapphire Dragon Bolts E instead of the regular ones, so hopefully the Smite phase will go a bit faster. And other than that, we're just going to send it. So I've gone back to watch this clip like five, ten times, I don't even know at this point. Can anyone tell me why my character decided to randomly run into melee range? I'm behind the spike. I'm clicking on the boss with my Bofa. 
As soon as the attack goes out, I switch to my crossbow. And for some reason, that made my character just run at the boss. I don't exactly know why. I don't know. I, I, I'll put the clip on. I'll slow it down. I'll show you guys here again. But what? Okay, well, I'm not going to lie. I did like 20, 25 kills over at Muspa. And then that death sort of tilted me. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why. I just... I was having fun at Barrows, why would I stop, you know? So, I'm back here, I, I'll ruin my 1000 KC on the high scores, it doesn't really matter, so... Uh, yeah, we're back at Barrows. Yay, let's go! 17 chests later, and I've got myself an elite clue, so I will be right back with a casket. Okay, surely this is the casket, right? Hey, let's go! Piscarillus Scarf, heck yeah! I'm actually so excited about that. I stayed up extremely late trying to get that elite clue done. And uh, yeah, feels good to be rewarded. I appreciate it, game. Thank you very much. All right. Hello. Good morning to the gamers. Uh, I spent most of last night just mining some amethyst as I finished my episode of my show before I went to bed. And uh, my plan was actually to go and kill some of those undead zombie pirate things in the wilderness uh, to try and get the teleport block scroll thingy. Uh, they are here, I think. I don't know. I haven't actually gone over there yet. But turns out that that scroll is like extremely rare. And I have a feeling they're going to change it. So I'm not going to go after it now. I think people are estimating it's about a 1 in 20,000 right now. And I am not going to go and kill 20,000 undead zombie pirates. Uh, that's just not going to happen, at least for now. So instead, we're going to go and roll a new task, like plant. Okay, back on the spreadsheet. Just ignore this. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Oh, there we go. Uh, we can complete the task, and let's see what we're going to go do. Get one unique draw from God Wars Dungeon. Okie dokie. Wait, I forgot. This is actually, like, really good. Uh, I am essentially done with Grardor. I have the chest plate and the tacits, and I'm not going to go for the boots. Even though I need them for a clue step, I'm going to get those later. Instead, I'm going to prioritize going to Zilliana, and I'm going to try and get a Ceridoman hilt, and if not that, an armor crossbow, but probably far more likely a sword or a light. Uh, but yeah, either way, I finally get to go and do a different God Wars dungeon boss, and uh, hopefully we can spoon a shard one as well. Uh, that way I can actually use my Bando's God Sword and potentially a Sarah God Sword if I get one of those. So, yeah, I actually get to go and do something new at God Wars Dungeon, which is great. Uh, the unfortunate thing is I don't know how to kill Zilliana very well. So I need to go and look up what my best method is going to be for that with the gear that I have. But, uh, yeah, this is actually going to be really good, I think. But first, I need to go and get some ecumenical keys. Uh, the Sarah KC is kind of annoying to get, so I'm just going to go over here and kill some imps and stuff. Alright, so this is the gear setup I'm going to go with. Just pulled gear and inventory off the wiki and made a few changes with what I had. And I brought some thralls. It didn't say to do that, but... Uh, I don't really care about the Alex necessarily, so uh, yeah, I figured Thralls might help. And got the Blowpipe and the Serp Helm to guarantee Venom on the minions. And Ecumenical Key and Bones to Peaches for healing. And yeah, I think I'm good to go. Oh yeah, and these are the tile markers from the Tile Packs plugin for the Bofa method. Uh, the red tiles are the attack tiles, the yellow ones are the walks in between, the green is for the fresh start method, you run up there, then you run there, and then you're in the cycle, and the blue is where you start on your repeated kills. So, yeah, if you're curious, that's what those are. Okay, not gonna lie to you guys, the first trip went terribly. <laughs> I got four kills, and I never really understood how to venom the minions while staying in the cycle without sort of messing everything up. Uh, but by the end of it, I was getting the flow of the cycle down. So what I think I might do is just ignore venoming the minions early. Uh, I'm still going to bring the blowpipe and the Serp Helm uh, just to venom them when I kill them. But I'm going to focus on killing Zilliana first. I think that'll make it easier to learn. Okay, so that trip went significantly better. I believe I got 15 kills, and it's mostly because I finally figured out how to, like, 
start the kill. Uh, I was confused with these tiles right here, so I knew you were supposed to start in the blue one, but it turns out you're supposed to go from blue, hit her once when she spawns, and then run to this red tile. I was running to this one, and then I was getting hit somewhere in this corner. So going from this blue tile to that tile and then doing the cycle means you never get hit, and that significantly increased the uh, length of the trip when I wasn't getting hit, like, twice, so... Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. I think I'm going to re-optimize the inventory and just go again. Only difference in the inventory this time, I'm going to drop the super defense and the stamina in exchange for an extra range pot and an explorer's ring. Uh, the explorer's ring can alk stuff for me as well as give me run back instead of the stamina pot if I need it. Uh, although I didn't really need it that much last time. And then some extra prayer pots to go along with the range pot to hopefully extend my trip. And then I have the Sarah bruise for the defense instead of the super defense pot. So uh, yeah, should be good to go. Figured at some point I should actually talk about the drop table here. Uh, the four items that I'm going after are the Ceridoman Sword, Ceridoman's Light, Armadale Crossbow, and Ceridoman's Hilt. Uh, like I mentioned before, the Crossbow and Hilt are much, much preferred as the other two are essentially useless for me, but the other two are much more likely. Uh, so there's a 1 in 127 chance for the Sword, 254 for the Light, and then both the Crossbow and Hilt are a 1 in 508 uh, so I have about the same chance of getting a crossbow or a hilt as I do a light and about two times that chance to get a sword. So uh, that's what we're expecting, but we're hoping for the cooler things. Oh, Sarah Doman sword. Okay, sure. I mean, honestly, that was to be expected. It is a little disappointing because, you know, I was hoping to get something useful. I don't think I have even a single use for a Ceridoman Sword, but uh, now it is in the log. So next time we get a uh, God Wars Dungeon unique task, when we go back to Zilliana, we don't have to worry about that. And we got it extremely early, 21 kills. That was the first kill of that trip. So I cannot complain. Fast tasks are always nice, but uh, yeah, hopefully we get another God Wars Dungeon task soon because I was actually kind of enjoying that. I did actually just go and check, and the two tasks that we have the most of left on the Elite tier are the uh, God Wars Dungeon task and the Raids task, both having 12 left on the tier. So it is pretty likely that we roll one fairly soon. And uh, yeah, speak of rolling a new task, let's go do it. Okay, here we go. Complete the task. I would love to see another God Wars Dungeon task, please, spreadsheet. Get one unique from Shades of Morton. Okay, well, it's not God Wars Dungeon, but that should be pretty easy. I have five items left from Shades of Morton, the Gold Locks, three Zealot Pieces, and the Tree Wizard's Journal. And for all five of these items, either the only way or the best way to get them is from the Gold Chest. So that's what I will be doing. Killing Urium Shades, burning the remains, and opening Gold Chests. And fortunately for me, I already have a bunch of gold keys, so I might just go and open all of these and then uh, we'll continue from there. I think I am going to gather a bunch of Urium Remains, though. I've heard that they're really good for getting elite clues. Uh, if you already have all the Urium Remains and the logs, pyre logs, whatever, they are very fast elite clues. Now, unfortunately for Iron Men, getting all those things is what's going to take the time, but uh, on a task like this, I might as well try it. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan. So I think I actually am just going to go way overboard on gathering keys right now. Uh, it'll just make all Elite Clue tasks or Shades of Morton tasks in the future extremely easy if I just have all the keys already. So I'm going to make a bunch of these Flame Tar bracelets. I'm going to go and get a bunch of Urim Remains, get a bunch of oil, and just burn them all. I'm not going to go for any specific number. I'm just going to go until I'm bored of it. I don't know. Uh, and I'm just going to stockpile a bunch of keys. And then, yeah, we can just save them in the bank for whenever we need them like this task or any Elite Clue task or Shades of Morton task in the future. So, yeah, I got to make some bracelets and then we got to go and fix some temples. Okay, so here's the plan. Uh, just going to be going over to the store over there, buying an inventory full of olive oil, coming over here, helping to repair the temple until I have enough sanctity to uh, bless my oil into sacred oil, which I don't know what percent it's at, but uh, apparently I can do it now. It might be 10%. Yeah, there it is. And uh, yeah, just repeating that process, going and banking all of this sacred oil until I'm bored. These videos are getting longer and longer to make, so if you're enjoying them, be sure to check if you're subscribed. Over 50% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed, and I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers, so if you want to help, go and press the button. Thanks. 
Okay, I did about an hour of making sacred oil. I've got 542 in the bank, uh, which is a good number. I realized I don't have that many redwood logs. Maybe tonight I'll go and AFK some of those. Uh, but you need redwood logs to burn the Urium remains. So uh, maybe that's a good number to stop at for now. And I'm going to go and start killing them. I don't actually have that many. I only have 20 apparently. Uh, so yeah, going to go kill some Urium shades. So according to how long it took me to get the first inventory of Urium remains, I should be able to get like 215 an hour, uh, not including banking. So maybe like 200 an hour. So yeah, this uh, 542 is probably going to take me like two and a half, three hours of killing Urium shades. So that's fun. few hours later and I am done collecting everything. I've got all my redwood pyre logs. I've got the Urium remains, although uh, I may go get a few more in a bit here. I just wanted to go and get started. So uh, yeah, time to burn them all. Okay, I am finally done burning all the remains. I got the extra urine remains. I used all of the redwood pyre logs that I had. I have 440 gold keys in the bank ready to go. Uh, it took me probably like six, seven hours total uh, of all the time gathering supplies and whatnot. So all things considered, not so bad. Uh, each one of these keys has a one in 139 chance at elite clues, minus 5% for the elite combat diary. I don't know exactly what that is, but uh, this should be like four elite clues worth in seven hours, which isn't bad. Obviously right now, I'm just gonna go and go for uh, one of the uniques. That is my task, but just having them in the bank is great. And if I get an elite clue before I get a unique, you bet your ass I'm gonna go do it. Uh, so we can finally go and start opening chests. Let's just, uh, let's just go do it. As far as which unique I'd like to see first, uh, I think the gold locks obviously would make all of the future Urium remains collecting faster. So that'd probably be the best. Uh, but the zealot pieces would also be great uh, for prayer training. I don't really care about the tree wizard's journal at all, but I will have to get it at some point. So uh, yeah, let's just do it. I got an... There's no way the first Shades of Morton task that I had in the elite tier, I got the zealot boots on my first key, and then I got the zealot helm on my second key. I went two for two on zealot pieces that are supposed to be one in a hundred. My luck here is crazy. Well, like I said, I don't feel bad at all about all the time. I literally spent seven hours collecting stuff, burning Urium shades just to get it on the first key. Uh, but yeah, like I said, all these are going to be used for Elite Flute tasks or Shades of Morton tasks in the future. So uh, yeah, I am not upset about that at all. And two pieces of Zealot robes is just useful. So yeah, cool. And we're done. We can go roll a new task. Okay, back on the spreadsheet. Complete the task. And I guess if I had to choose a task to get right now, it would either be another Shades of Morton task or an Elite Flute task. Because, well, I have all the things for it already. So let's see what we got. Get the chompy chick. Okay, I kind of forgot this was a task, but all right. So I actually needed to edit last episode, so I've just been here chopping redwoods the entire time, uh, trying to replenish the redwood logs that I used in that last task. Uh, but yeah, done editing, done everything, so let's go move on. So the chompy chick is a 1 in 500 chance from the chompy birds, both killing and plucking them. So I am going to be plucking them, even though it's a little bit slower. Actually, you know what? I might not pluck them now that I'm thinking about it, because there is another task on the elite tier to get the uh, max level archer headdress. Uh, chompy bird hunting. You have to get the, the max level chompy bird hat, which I believe is 4,000 chompy bird kills. And if I check my bow... I am at 1,013, so I'm going to need to do another 3,000 of these, which saying out loud makes it sound really sad, but uh, I should get the chick by the time I get the hat anyway, so maybe I won't pluck them. Plucking them is really slow and annoying. Maybe I'll just kill them all. I don't know. I need to go figure this out. 
All right, this is what I'm going to be using. I went and made 420 Adamant Brutal Arrows, that along with some range strength, a little bit of range accuracy, and some weight reducing clothing so I can run around more. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go and do it. According to the wiki, you don't need any more than like 60 range accuracy because they're such a low level. So I don't need to worry about that. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go and get started. I don't know what I'm going to show you guys because this won't be that interesting. But uh, hey, I got to do it. So let's just do it. I am so upset. I was recording on my main account, as you probably saw the footage that I was just taking. I literally just got here, and I, I got I got the pet. I, I didn't even have my recorder on. So, uh, there it is. I, it took me 17 kills. 17. Yeah, just the old 1-7. I... Why is this where I get spooned? Honestly, the thing that I'm most annoyed about... I have Entity Hider on on my other account, uh, just so that I can get better footage when I'm recording this account, and it has the option to hide other people's pets, so you can't even see the moment that I got it. If I didn't have that on, you would have seen it in the footage that I was recording right before it. I'm so upset, but I mean, I kind of have to, otherwise you see, even though you don't see other players, you see their pets and it's really annoying, but uh, yeah, there it is, Chompy Chick, 17 kills, we'll take it. And of course, you already know, this little guy is going in the house immediately, back with all his friends. And uh, that is eight pets on the all pets obtained. That is very cool. But I guess that means we have to go back to the spreadsheet and get something new to do. Uh, that one took me all of like 15 minutes, including gathering all the stuff. So uh, yeah, no complaints there. Let's go see what we're doing next. Okay, here we go. Complete the chompy chick task. And let's generate a new one and hope that we get just as lucky. Hey, there we go. Get one unique from raids. Heck yeah. So as happy as I am to roll a raids task in terms of the items that I'm going to get to unlock, this does mean that raids are very much at the mercy of RNG. And sometimes you just get unlucky and these tasks take a very long time to record. So what I think I'm going to do is I have about two days until I need to start getting the next video ready or this video ready. Uh, so I'm going to raid for two days and if I get it, great. If not, we'll finish it in the next video. And uh, in terms of where I'm going to go, I would love to go back to chambers for a dex, but I don't really like doing solo chambers. So I'm only going to go if I have people to raid with. If I'm solo, probably going to go back to TOA. A uh, fang would be huge, a light bearer would be huge, obviously a shadow would be incredible, even Missouri would be great. The only thing I don't really want to see at TOA is one of the jewels, uh, although I would use it, really rather one of the other purples. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go back to TOA. It's really late right now, so I don't think I'll be able to find anyone for some chambers, so probably going to go send some TOA first. Okay, I just got to say, I am so impressed with myself that I remembered to put my pickaxe in there. Thank you, thank you. You can stop applauding now. First raid back, no deaths, can't complain. Uh, it was a little bit slow, but I was pretty rusty in all the fights, so uh, yeah, that makes sense. And we are rewarded with a purple. No, okay. Are you kidding me? What is my luck today? I'm so glad I decided to do just one raid before I went to bed. Because, like, uh, my luck today has been insane. Jewel of the Sun, let's go. I mean, obviously, I would have rather the purple, but it was so fast. What the heck? Yeah, I guess you can just uh, scratch that whole thing I said about doing this task in the next video. Because, like... Yeah, that took me all of 28 minutes and 53 seconds, and we are already done. And, uh, yeah, we actually get to attach this Jewel of the Sun to the Karis Partisan, uh, which makes the Karis Partisan of the Sun. I believe this is the one that people actually use at High Invocations to heal for prayer points. I don't know. I've never actually had any of these jewels before, so I need to look into this. Okay, yeah, the Karis Partisan of the Sun has a couple effects. 
Uh, for starters, it has 25% increased accuracy against targets at 25% health or less, which is just sort of useful, I guess. Uh, I only use it for Kefri, but at least then I'll have a better weapon for Kefri. And I guess he goes down below 25% a lot because you go through all the phases, so I don't know, maybe it's good there. It also has a passive effect that heals you every time you kill an enemy at the cost of some prayer points. I don't think that's too relevant, but the special attack, uh, you use it and it drains your prayer to heal you based on how much prayer points you have. So yeah, cool, I guess. I don't really know how much I'm going to use the spec or anything other than just stabbing Kefri with it, but uh, good to have. We are done the task somehow in half an hour and we can go roll a new one. Let's do it. I will say I am a little disappointed. Uh, I was kind of hoping for a bigger upgrade than that, but... Uh, I guess I can't complain, complete the task, and let's see what we're going to go do. Get one unique from the Desert Treasure 2 bosses. Okay. So I already have both the Tablet and the Quartz from the two bosses that I actually know how to kill, uh, being Duke and the Leviathan, and I've only really killed Whisperer and Vardorvis twice, uh, once for the quest and once for a combat achievement when I was going for the Elite Combat Diaries. So I think I'm going to end up killing one of them. I don't really know which right now. Uh, probably Vardorvis, just because the Blood Quartz is more useful. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to try. The only time I killed Vardorvis was for the combat achievement where you could only have under 2 mil worth of gear. So it was very rough. And I'm hoping that with better gear, it's not as painful. Although, I don't know. But I'm just going to try it. I think I'll start with Vardorvis and see how it goes. Honestly, I was just going to go to bed, but with how my luck's been today, I figured I had to send at least one kill. Uh, obviously, we didn't get anything, but even that one kill, I sort of remember what I'm doing, and I feel a little bit comfortable here. So I think this is what I'm going to do, but i uh, going to save it for tomorrow, because it is 2 a.m. Okay, hello, good morning to the gamers. Yesterday was crazy, and I hope to continue that luck to today. And uh, yeah, I forgot to talk about this yesterday. I mentioned that I wanted to get the blood cords from Vardorvis, but realistically, most likely probably going to get the tablet first, which is actually really useful just to get back here faster for future kills. And if not that, we still don't have an Awakener's Orb somehow. I believe it's a 1 in 50-ish. And I've done 38 kills at Duke and 57 kills at Leviathan, and I don't have an orb. So that is also pretty likely... Either way, we're just going to start and yeah, hope we continue our luck. I did just go and actually check the drop table. Apparently the Awakener's Orb is pretty different drop rates per boss. Uh, much more common at the Whisperer, about a 1 in 50 at Duke and Leviathan, but then a 1 in 80 at Vardorvis. So not as common, although still the second most common unique to get here. So yeah, I just wanted to correct myself. Okay, let's do it. Oh, hey, 147 PB, nice. And in case you were wondering what all the stuff in my inventory is for, uh, when I'm done the kill, I take my Rada's Blessing over to Mount Karum to bank, uh, resupply, I then go over to the Desert Amulet 4 Narda teleport, restore all my stats at the Narda statue, and then I take the uh, quest point cape to the fairy ring, BLS, run over to the rowboat, and then run all the way over there. Uh, it is not fast, I really want that tablet, but it works and it doesn't use any like house tabs or anything, so uh, yeah, that's the plan. And so, as you can see by the chat box, uh, I've had a few unfortunate deaths here. Uh, Vardorvis is just one of those bosses where when it rains it pours, man. When you start messing up, it just destroys you, especially at the end of the fight. I need to get to the point where I can do two kills per trip, because these one kill trips are... Even worse, zero kill trips are not cutting it. Well, pretty much right as I said that, my first two kill trip, uh, very good timing me. The first kill went so perfectly, the second one not so much, but uh, we'll take it. Okay, speed trialist time, 111, I'm zooming? 
that was just the cleanest kill I could possibly ask for. 111 is crazy. Considering I've only done 11 kills and I don't really know the boss, I just got really lucky with my hits. And also, the boss is so easy when none of the axes spawn in the spot that you're standing in. You literally just stand there and then switch to prey range every once in a while. Honestly, the one kill trips aren't that bad. The only painful part is the run back. Because I don't have the teleport yet, by the way, the teleport takes you like right here. Uh, because I don't have that, I have to go from Narda to my quest point cape, to the fairy ring, to Zaya, over to the boat, over up here, over to the shortcut, over there. The whole process takes like 90 seconds, which really slows down the one kill trips. Let's go! That was my third kill of the trip, too. My first three kill trip, and I get rewarded with a strangled tablet. Heck yes. That's actually so sick. I'm very happy I got that first. Uh, now, next time I get a Desert Treasure 2 boss task, I can use that to actually be able to do, like, more kills per hour. Uh, especially because, like you just saw, or like I just said, uh, three kill trip there. I'm actually sort of, like, learning the boss, which is to be expected, but... Uh, yeah, feels good. Learn the boss, getting the unlocks, everything is good. Nice. So yeah, now the Ring of Shadows can teleport me to the Stranglewood, which like I said, puts you just at the base of this pyramid here. Click over there, easy shortcut, much faster to get back to Vardorvis. And I probably will end up going back there uh, on the next Desert Trader 2 task. Like I said, I really want that Blood Quartz. Although, I do I even have another Ancient Icon? I don't know. Either way, uh, yeah, I will probably be going back there on the next Desert Trader 2 boss task. And now we can actually do it more efficiently, which is great. And we're done the task. Pog. That's probably going to have to do it for this video. Uh, like I said, I am on a little bit of a time crunch here. So let's go roll a new task. I'm just going to go do a quick farm run. And then we can go roll a new task. See what we're doing next video. And yes, I am starting to do my farm runs again. Uh, I went a long period there of just not doing any farm runs. I don't really know why. I was just lazy. And uh, I was doing a bunch of other tasks, but I am doing my farm runs now. I have like 200 Renar seeds to go through, and I figured that stocking up on prayer potions would be nice. So, uh, yeah, farm runs are back on the table here. Okay, everyone's favorite time back on the spreadsheet. Like I said, probably going to have to save this one for the next video, but let's complete the task and let's at least see what it is. Get five new uniques from easy clues. Okay, sure. I do have a few clues and caskets in the bank already, so I'm going to go and do all three of the clues that I have. Then we'll open the 11 easy caskets, see how much progress we make, and then we'll save the rest of it for the next one. Alright, clues done. 11 easy caskets to open. My collection log is broken. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, easy <laughs> trails. 677 open so far, 95 uniques. So, yeah, we've actually... We, we've got... A lot of the more common uniques, obviously still missing a lot of elegant pieces, still missing some of the capes, but uh, yeah, honestly, 11 caskets, I am hoping for one unique. If I get one new unique in here, I am very happy. Alright, there it is, bronze, full helm, gold, one new unique in the six caskets, five more to go. Alright, you know what? I'm happy. I got one unique. That's exactly what I wanted. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to leave the video a like and check if you're subscribed. As those are the two best ways to help my videos with the YouTube algorithm. And they are both free and take like two seconds. And that would really help me out. So, thank you. In the next video, we will finish this easy clue task and go from there. But for now, that's going to be it for me. I'll see you in the next one. And I want to give a big thank you to all of my channel members, but a special thank you to my tier 3 Big Spoon channel members, Alchemist BTW, Jack Staumer, Zach Martin, Luxitaire, Tony Adkins, Dolph, and Fading Shadow. And if you want to see your name here in the credits for the rest of the season, consider becoming a channel member. The lowest tier is only $2 a month, and it really helps me out. Thank you.